Hey everyone, this is Mr. Dove, or my secret identity, Ghost Man. <laughs> this is the vacation for normal people, but for us, it's a lab. This is where normal people will cook up uh, food. We're cooking up inventions here based on Lucas Three Laws. So, your practical as always. Another person gets to join us today. His name is Isaac Newton. We're going to learn about his three laws and how they can help us develop a couple of different superpowers. Alright, so, well, and away. So over here on the left side, we have Newton's first law. Newton's first law says an object at rest, that means not moving, will stay at rest unless it's acted upon by an outside force, meaning a push or pull from outside of that object. And an object that is in motion or moving will keep moving or stay in motion unless it is acted upon by an outside force. So if you look over here on the right, this is what that means. We have an object over here, this box. Right now, it is at rest. It is not moving. It will stay at rest unless it's acted upon by an outside force. In this case, this person applying a force to the box. So let's have them apply a force. And now you see the speed is starting to go up and the object is starting to move because now an outside force has been applied. Now when I release the box, it's starting to slow down. And the reason that it's not staying in motion yet is because it's still being acted upon by an outside force. In this case, the floor is exerting a force of friction to bring it back to a stop. Now I have changed the surface of the floor so that there's close to no friction. This would be like if it was in an empty environment without anything around it that could exert an outside force back on it. So it still will be where it is and at rest if there's no outside force. And this time, if you apply an outside force to it, What'll happen is because there's no force of friction that's being an outside force slowing it down, it just keeps going and going and going. The object in motion is staying in motion and there's no outside force that's going to act on it anymore. So this idea that an object at rest will naturally stay at rest, or an object of motion will naturally stay in motion if all of the forces are balanced, meaning there's no outside forces speeding it up or slowing it down or changing its direction. That idea that an object will do that is called inertia. And you can see that on the left side of the screen here when I'm pointing to. So that is Newton's first law. Okay, so right now I'm an object at rest. And then when an outside force of this super special slingshot acts upon me, then I'm going to go from at rest to motion. In three, two, one. Wow, what a rush, but I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> Let's just keep going on to the second law. Okay, so now we are at Newton's second law. This is the idea that Newton discovered that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So it's like a math problem, but a pretty easy one at that, where force is the push or pull on an object. Mass is the amount of matter or stuff inside an object. And acceleration is how much an object is speeding up. Not its speed, but how much it's speeding up. So 
if we know two of the values of this equation, we can find the missing value that we're looking for. So let's go ahead over here to the right side of the screen where I have a chart. Remember for this, force equals mass times acceleration. So first, I want to show you all an example before we did a few of these problems. Let's say you had an object that had a mass of one kilogram. That means there's one kilogram worth of matter or stuff inside, or about 2.2 pounds. Like the amount of stuff inside of here is one kilogram inside this silver thing. If I were to drop that silver thing, its acceleration or how much it would be speeding up because of gravity would be about 9.8 meters per second squared. Then, if I wanted to find the force, I would do the mass times the acceleration, so that's 1 times 9.8, and that would get me a force of 9.8, and then the units for force are Newtons, named after Isaac Newton. All right, now let's work on the rest together. So, if we had a mass of 2 kilograms for an object, an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared, then what would our force be if force equals mass times acceleration? Hopefully, you realized that it would be 6 newtons because 2 times 3 equals 6. All right, now let's say that we know the force of an object is 40 newtons and the acceleration is five meters per second squared. Then five times what mass would give you a force of 40? So five times what equals 40? In other words, 40 divided by five gives you what back? Hopefully you did the math facts, or you did something by hand to get you eight because five times eight gives you 40. So eight kilograms for that one. And then finally, let's say that an object has a force of 108 newtons in a certain direction. And it has a mass of nine kilograms. Then what is its acceleration in meters per second squared if that number times nine would get you 108 back? This is still actually a mass. You could also say 108 divided by 9 gets you what? Okay. Hopefully, we came up with 12. 12 times 9 would be 108. So, to summarize, the mass of the object in kilograms times the acceleration of the object in meters per second squared, meaning how much it's speeding up gives you the force of that object in whatever direction the uh, acceleration is. And the force of the object is measured in newtons. All right, so based on our calculations for Newton's second law, we've learned that because force equals mass times acceleration, the larger the mass of an object and the faster it speeds up or its acceleration, the higher that is, the more force you're going to have applied overall. So let's put that to the test. I have an object or projectile with a small amount of mass. We could call that an ice ball and an object or projectile with a large amount of mass. We'll call this a fireball. All right, so first let's try small mass and small acceleration so it doesn't speed up that much. Eh, just a little bit of force. Let's try small mass and fast acceleration or a lot of acceleration. Okay, that's some more force than the previous one. Let's try our fireballs now. <laughs> so we've got a large mass and let's try first with a small amount of acceleration. Okay even a little bit more. And now, if our calculations are correct, 
a large mass object with a large amount of acceleration, meaning it's speeding up a bunch, should apply a lot more force than all of the other scenarios. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yep, <laughs> that definitely did. I was afraid that was going to break something. <laughs> right, popsicle. <laughs> all right, so hopefully that um, makes a lot of sense. All right, so now we're on Newton's third law, which says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What that means is when you apply a force to an object, it is applying a force back on you that is equal in size and in the opposite direction. So let's test a couple of these in our lab. All right, so if I were to apply a force downward on this chair with super strength, doesn't matter how much force I'm applying, the chair is applying the same amount of force back up at me. It's in the opposite direction of where I'm applying my force. All right? And then over here, if I'm applying a force to this wall, the wall is applying a force back towards me in the same amount, just in an opposite direction. I may have to work on my super strength. All right, so those are Newton's three laws. Wait, hold on, that's my kilogram. You know who I am? I'm force man. Force boy. Super strength. All right, here's a projectile with low mass and low acceleration. Is that all you got? No, I got something with higher mass and higher acceleration. Go get them, Popsicle. Take that. Now let's see who this is. And 